I was playing with my kids and I did what dads do. I absolutely shredded on my son's <clears throat> bike. His tiny bike made me think it'd be cool to have a really tiny bike. So I made this. It's pretty small. But is it the smallest bike? I could not get this idea out of my head. And I also had my wife taunting me. Yeah, it seems like it could be smaller though. They look like a circus freak. Which led to an arms race of self one-upmanship making increasingly tiny bikes. I also really wanted to beat the world record and I ended up making a bike so small it could fit in my pocket. This ended up being really challenging with a lot of failures. I had to make and remake so many parts before I got this thing working. I wasn't even sure if I could physically ride this thing. It took weeks of practice and crashing, which my wife found thoroughly entertaining, especially once I started trying to hit jumps. So let's take a bad idea all the way to its logical conclusion and see if we can make the world's smallest bike and actually ride it. So let's start at the beginning when I thought I would be only making one bike. All right, I wanna make a tiny bike that's way smaller than this, but I also want it to be easy. So my design strategy is really focused on my water jet. It cuts almost anything with a supersonic stream of water and abrasive. I'm designing as many parts as possible to be 2D shapes that can be cut out of a sheet because it's fast and easy. The different pieces have little tabs that fit together like a puzzle and then throw on a few welds and you've got a frame. There's some parts that seem more complicated like the pedals, but I was able to water jet out all the complex stuff and then do just a little bit of machining for bearings and other stuff. My wheel choice for this bike gave me a bit of a headache because these are scooter wheels. If I try to put a shaft through here and twist it, it's just gonna slip. So I had to machine them to accept this fancy little water jet part, which will accept a key that will lock it onto a shaft. Now if the shaft turns, the wheel turns. The bike will go forward if I pedal, but if I stop pedaling, I want it to keep rolling. Bikes usually do this by having a special gear between the pedals and the rear wheel, which if you pedal forward, it drives the wheel, but if you stop, or pedal backwards, it skips. And it's basically a ratchet, which is that ticking sound you hear. There are bikes that don't do this called fixies, and people who hate their knees really like them. That special gear is called a free hub, and this bike is just barely big enough for me to use one in a standard chain, which makes my life a lot easier. We just gotta install them. But these bikes are a lot of work. Why am I making one big video when I can make 500 shorts? Hey guys, I made this quick short just to show you how to install a bottom bracket. You just do this. That's it, thanks for watching. Eh, maybe not. This bike is almost done. Just need the pedals and the chain. If you pedal, it goes forward. But if you stop pedaling, it coasts. So cool. What are the odds I can just ride this thing? If you said zero, you'd be right. I really thought my biking experience would help me, but it did not. I practiced every day for five days. But then there was this point where it just clicked. Oh yeah, smooth as butter, baby. Finally, yes. <laughs> Woo. This is so much harder to ride than I was expecting. I really thought I'd just be able to get on it and ride it. <laughs> Now I just want to see what my wife thinks. What's with the little seat? It's a bike for someone with a very small butt, long legs, and huge feet. That should fit you really well then. Has science gone too far? Here we go. It's like what a monkey would ride at the circus. This mountain is hard. It's as smooth as we're going to get. What do you think? I like the chonky wheels and it seems like it could be smaller. Your face could be smaller, which is hypothetical. I haven't thought that about you. I hate to say it, but she's really not wrong. You ever see those vacuum seal bags where you put a pillow in it and it shrinks down to the size of a small wafer? This is kind of like that. There's a lot of air we could squeeze out by making everything smaller. I was trying to figure out how small I should go and I came across the Guinness record for the world's smallest bike which they say is 8.4 centimeters long. And notably, they don't seem to care about height. I mean, just look at this bike. And I think the reason for this is you just can't go below a certain height without your hands intersecting your feet. So what I'm gonna do is take the record size, subtract one millimeter from it, and that's my target. I don't see any good reason to overexert myself here. World's smallest is world's smallest, even if it's only by a millimeter. Just to see what I was dealing with, I took a bike and scaled it down to 8.4 centimeters long, 
and it is a lot smaller than I was expecting. This bike is smaller than the wheel of the last bike that I did. It is gonna be very difficult to fit everything into this size. I guess that's why it's the world record. So it took a bit of finessing, but here's what I came up with. Like the other bike, I was able to make a lot of parts on the water jet, but when you go really small, you have to pack more functionality into fewer parts, so there's more CNC stuff. This is the frame, basically the main body of the bike, and this is the fork, which holds the front wheel. There was no room to fit normal bike components, so I had to make my own stuff. Making the gears is pretty easy, but how to make it coast was not obvious. Remember, a normal bike uses a free hub like this, which is just way too big. I eventually found a one-way bearing. They let a shaft rotate freely in one direction, but if you turn it the other way, it locks up. Putting this all together, we have the pedals going into the one-way bearing. If you pedal forward, it locks up and spins a gear, and you go forward. If you stop pedaling, the wheel spins the chain the other way, and the one-way bearing spins freely, and the bike coasts. And then the last thing we need is some tires. So we're gonna cast some wheels. I made a 3D printed mold that fits around my wheels. We're using a two-part polyurethane to get a nice hard rubber. This is a pretty cool process that works surprisingly well. Noise. Mm. It kind of looks like a giraffe. And even though it looks huge, it has the same footprint as my prototype. Ah, oh, I love it. It's so tiny. I should be able to just just drive it away. I had a lot of practice on the other bikes. So this should be easy. Here we go. Ugh. Ow. All my practice on the other bike did not translate to this bike. I don't know why, but this thing is just totally different to ride. I think it's gonna take a lot of practice. And that got me seriously wondering if I wanna spend a bunch of time learning to ride a bike that's one millimeter smaller than the record. And then my wife said, oh, I thought it was gonna be smaller, which just sealed the deal. I'm done. So all my talk about beating a record by a millimeter being cool was just coping. It is way cooler to crush a record. We're gonna go as absolutely tiny as we possibly can. I was initially thinking two times smaller, but I thought, why not? Let's go for three. And that sounded great until I printed out a scale model. It is smaller than I was expecting. The wheelbase on this is about the size of one of the wheels on the last bike. And remember, we only care about the length between the wheels. It's gonna have to be taller to be able to have cranks and handlebars that I can actually hold. My gut reaction was that this would be impossible, but I think there might be a way. So here's what I'm thinking. A normal bike has the pedals between the wheels, but if we push them up, we can shrink the wheels down and squeeze them right up against each other and then delete the vestigial seat. Squeezing all this in means some pretty complicated CNC parts. Normally I'm doing three axis CNC milling, which means a machine that can cut laterally and vertically, which works great if you want a hole on the top, but if I want a hole on the side, I have to take the part out and rotate it. And if you want features on all the sides, you're gonna be moving the part a lot. And if you want to machine something in this direction, it's possible, but you're in for a bad time. So I think it's time to pull out the big guns. This is a five axis mill. A five axis machine is just like a three axis, except it can rotate the part in any direction. That's why it's five instead of three. Which means it can machine on this side, and this side, and this side, on this random angle, or even all of the angles at the same time. So cool. This is super useful for the tiny bike because I had to fit so many things into just a couple tiny pieces. And with this, I can pretty much just design it however is best for the bike and it should be able to make it. And all I can think about is all the things that I'll be able to do with this for future projects. It's gonna unlock some pretty interesting stuff. So if that's interesting to you, don't forget to subscribe. It is so satisfying to press a button and then have finished parts like this. There's the tiny little frame. It's a little chunky, but it's the only way I could make it strong enough to hold me. This is the belt drive system, and the rear wheel has a one-way bearing in it so that it can coast. It's kind of weird looking. This is the front and rear wheels, and you steer like this. The rear wheel is driven by this belt via the pedals, and this long stick is what holds the handlebars. It's the teeny tiniest little itty bitty bike. The height of the handlebars I need to clear my feet really drive home how absolutely tiny this bike is. So there's two questions. Will it collapse under my weight? And if it doesn't, can I actually ride it? There's only one way to find out. All right, here we go. 
Definitely hard to balance on. That's a very unfortunate failure mode. Let's try again. Did you hear that? Here it is again. That's the sound of a tire giving up its soul. Finding something that wouldn't immediately break was a real challenge. Because all I have about a millimeter of space, I eventually discovered that gaffer's tape works really well. But then I discovered whoever designed these pedals was a real moron. You can't use them without your foot hitting the crank and jamming everything up. And I tried every shoe, and even no shoes. But the pedals are just too small, so I went back and made some human-sized pedals for it. I was feeling pretty good until my worst fear happened. This is gonna be problematic. The belt is skipping. If you put too much force through these belts, the teeth can skip. I think what's happening is I'm hitting a little tiny bump, and the bike has to lift my whole body weight, which makes way higher force, and it skips. I think we pretty much have to fit a chain in here. So what we're gonna do is engorge the rear wheel, which will make more room for a chain ring to fit. This will make the bike about half the size of the record instead of a third, but what else am I gonna do? And of course this means we get to redesign and remake most of the bike. All right, the chain fits and doesn't hit the ground. And I guess the bike is doing a reverse Carolina squat. I can't balance at all, but it almost kind of works. But doesn't something look a little off? Oh, this is bad. So remember how I made bigger pedals? Because they stick out further, they generate a lot more twisting force on the shaft, and yeah. I think my only option is to redesign and remake a bunch of these parts so that I can fit a thick crankshaft in here. This is the last thing I feel like doing. <laughs> I really don't want to do this, but I want it to work properly, so what am I gonna do? Let's make some parts. We get to remake the frame, the fork, the axle, the cranks, the gears, the spacers. Yeah, this was a major oversight. Old shaft, new shaft. I don't think that's gonna bend. Now that is one beefy little man. But I still can't ride for a reason that I really wish I would have noticed before I remade everything. When you pedal the bike, it tilts side to side. When I put the big pedals on, it can't tilt as far, and there's just not enough clearance now. I even tried making really short cranks that would give me more clearance, but I don't think there's any way to hack around this. We just have to get them up higher, which means we get to redesign and remake everything. I'm just gonna give you a taste. This is the new frame. It raises the cranks about 20 millimeters up, and it has plenty of clearance. I call it the tall boy. We've modified this so much, it's basically unrecognizable from where we started. So we need to see where we stand in relation to the record. 5.3 centimeters. 1.6 times smaller than the record, which I'm okay with. And here's a size comparison to essentially the current world record. The thing to remember is that even though this has big handlebars and big pedals, that's just because I have big hands and feet. The actual bike is very tiny, and that's what makes it so hard to ride. So the bike seems to work, but oh. it's still not clear if I can ride it. It is so, so much worse than the first bike. What makes it so hard is just geometry. When you push the cranks down, they extend past the front wheel and it tips the bike forward. Oh. And then because the wheels are so close together on this bike, it really can't resist twisting like this. So I can't pull my feet through the bottom of the stroke because it'll just twist the bike out from under me. I spent over a week practicing multiple times per day. I have two terabytes of footage of me failing to ride this thing. But at some point, it kind of clicked. Oh. I'm still not very good and my feet hit the ground a lot. I have a really hard time going more than a few feet. It's also really hard to stop. But this thing is totally rideable. It's not perfect, but... I think it's as good as I'm gonna physically be able to do right now. Now all I wanna know is what my wife thinks. I thought you were making a bike, not a scooter. This doesn't look like a scooter. All right, here we go. <laughs> Still getting the hang of it. Oh. A through F. What would you give this baby? C plus. It's the world's smallest bike. You can really ride it. I'm working on it. Are you getting paid off by some competitor? Big bike. What is an A? Take it off a jump. 
I, I, it has metal wheels. So? That'd be the last thing the bike ever did. <laughs> well, and there's your C+. Plus. What if I take the first bike, the big one off a jump? Does that give me an A? can give you an overall A. All right, well, I just got to find a jump of some kind. Some of the stuff that I make might seem like magic. Like, how does the moving hoop know where to go? But it's not magic, it's science. I've spent a lot of time learning stuff, which is what enables me to make stuff. So if you're interested in learning technical stuff so you can make stuff too, check out this video sponsor, Brilliant. I like to describe Brilliant as a tool that's really good at taking technical information and getting it into your brain. It works by taking a technical topic and breaking it down into a series of bite-sized lessons. So let's say you wanted to learn vector math. This is something that I use all the time. It's actually how the moving hoop knows where to go. There's a whole set of lessons on this. They work by teaching you the theory and then having you work examples. The lessons are also interactive and have you solving actual problems. So you're learning by doing, which is just the best way to learn. And then the lessons are the right size to do one or two a day which makes it very easy to learn consistently, which is huge. I used to try to cram textbooks, doesn't work. Now I spend 30 minutes a day learning new stuff and it is shocking how much you can learn if you do this consistently. And they have so much stuff to learn. I mean, just look at all this. It's like every kind of math, computer science, machine learning, data science, a ton of stuff you used to have to go to college for, not anymore. So if you're looking to level up your problem solving abilities, check out Brilliant. I've used it a ton, it works great, and you can try it for free for 30 days. Just go to brilliant.org slash stuff meet here. You can also click the link in the description and you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And that's it. Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video and I hope you check it out and get to experience the joy of learning. All right, it's jumping time. This is the ramp I crashed on the driveway. So I should be able to crash again. All right, which foot do I lead with? I'm nervous. All right, here we go. That was close. Whoa, oh. okay, hold on. Oh, pretty good. That was a land. Are you satisfied? Yes. Nice. Nice. I get an A. A.